Hey guys, so let's start with the paper two for foundation, June 2023. So first question says, write 6,184 correct to the nearest 100. So correct to the nearest 100, we're going to look at these digits. So 100 is basically 184 in 6,184. So we know 184, if we draw a number line, this is 100 and this is 200. So 184 is over here. So 184 is nearer to 200. So that means 6,184 is going to be 6,200. That is your answer. Question two says write 0 0.7 as a fraction. So 0 0.7 is going to be written as 7 over 10. Why? Because you move the decimal one place to the right hand side. And when we do that, what we do is we add a zero with the one. Now, where did the one come from? Every number, like whether it's a whole number or if it's a decimal number, it has a denominator of one. So 0 0.7 also has a denominator of one. So when we move the decimal one place to the right side, what we do is we add a zero in the denominator. The number of places you will move the decimal towards the right hand side, that many zeros will be added in the denominator. Hence, 0 0.7 becomes seven over 10. And that is your answer. Then question three says, change nine meters into centimeters. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So that means nine meters are going to equal to nine times 100, which is 900 centimeters. That is your answer. Question four says simplify three times 40. So we know three times four is equal to 12. So that means three times 40 is going to equal to 12 D. So that is your answer. Remember when you're adding like a constant to a variable, for example, if it was three plus 40, you can't simplify that because you can't add a constant to a variable. But if it's being multiplied, you can solve that. It should be three times 40, that's 12 D. Question five says, here's a list of numbers. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. One of these numbers is a multiple of 25. Which number? We know 25 times 4 is 100. So this is going to be our answer. If we did 25 times 2, that was 50. So that means 60 can't be a multiple of 25. 40 can't be a multiple of 25. And 25 times 1 is 25. So automatically 20 can't be a multiple of 25 as well. So if you check for 80, we see 25 times 3, which is going to be 75. And since we know 25 times 4 is 100, so 80 is also not a multiple. That is exactly why 100 is a multiple of 25 from this list. Question 6 says, Sherry has a fair ordinary dice. She rolls the dice once. On the probability scale, mark with the cross X the probability that Sherry gets the number 7. Now, in a fair ordinary dice, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Why? Because there's 6 sides and each, and each side has one number. So, the probability that she gets a 7 is going to be 0. Why? Because seven doesn't even like exist on the dice. Like there's six sides. So there's six numbers, not seven. On the probability scale, mark with the cross X, the probability that Sherry gets an even number. So now the number she can get is one, two, three, four, five, or six. So from these numbers, our even numbers are going to be two, four, and six. Which means the probability of her getting an even number is 3 over 6, which is basically equal to 1 over 2. So that comes over here.
Question 7 says, here's a triangle. The triangle is accurately drawn. Measure the length of AC. So what you will do is using your ruler, you will put on the line AC and you will measure the distance. Since I'm doing it digitally, so I can't really get a ruler to measure this. But like, I think you would be able to do it correctly. Just directly measure the length AC in centimeters and you'll have your answer. Then for the size of angle B, what you will do is you will put your character at B and you will put it over here like this and make sure that you put your center at point B. So you will measure your angle from the center and this angle over here would be your measurement of angle B. It says here's a different triangle, QP equals to QR. So QP equals to QR. Write on the mathematical name of this triangle. So in a triangle, when two lengths are equal, that means their opposite angles are also equal. And that triangle is called an isosceles triangle. Question 8 says the diagram shows three motorway service stations, P, Q, and R on a map. The map has a scale of 1 cm equals to 4 km. Work out the real distance from P to R. So P to R is going to be firstly sum of P, Q, and Q, R. So that's 8 plus 16, which is going to equal to 24 centimeters. Now they want us to find the real distance. If one centimeter equals to four kilometers based on the scale, 24 centimeter will equal to 24 times four. That is 96 kilometers. So that's your real distance from P to R. Question nine says here are the first five terms of a sequence. 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Write on the next term of the sequence. So if you notice, between each term, we're adding 5. So that means for the next term, we're also going to add 5. So that's going to be 23 plus 5, and that is 28. Part B says write on the ratio of the second term to the fourth term. Give your ratio in its simplest form. So second term is 8 and fourth term is 18. So that's going to be 8 ratio 18. Now we know 8 is 4 times 2 and 18 is 9 times 2. So which means we can cancel out the 2s. And what we're left with is 4 ratio 9. Now, since 4 and 9 don't come in the same times table, so we can't further simplify this ratio. So we just leave it as 4 ratio 9. Question 10 says this graph can be used to find the cost of parking a car in a car park for up to 12 hours. Use the graph to find the cost of parking a car for 4 hours. So for four hours, what we're going to do is, we're going to draw a line from the time of four hours, which is over here. So this is four. So corresponding cost value is six pounds. So that is going to be your answer. Justin drives into the car park at eight in the morning. He when he when he drives out the car park, he has to pay nine pounds. At what time does Justin drive out of the car park? So if he's paying nine pounds, that means we are spending six hours in the car park. So if he's spending six hours in the car park, so if he's entering the car park at 8 a.m. and he's spending six hours there, so we know from eight, we go to nine, 
then 10, then 11, 12. So we already covered four hours. Then 1 p.m., five hours, and 2 p.m. is six hours. So what time he leave? He is going to leave at... Two p.m. Question eleven says the table shows information about the weights of the people in hotel lift. Show that the total weight of the people in a lift is less than twelve hundred kgs. First, we need to find the total weight for each category. So for forty kgs, it's just one person. For fifty, it's two. So we do fifty times two, which is hundred. For sixty, it's four. So sixty times 2, 60 times 4, which is 240, 70 times 5, that's 350, and 80 times 3 is 240, 90 and 40 are as it is. So, so now that we have all of the values for weight, what we're going to do is we're going to add these now. So 40 plus 100 plus 240 plus 350 plus 240 and plus 90. That's going to give us 1060 kg. So as you can see, that is less than 1200 kgs and that is exactly what the question was asking us to prove. So remember not to just add up the weights directly. You have to first add them up based on the number of people that are present for each category. And then you add the total weights and that will give you the correct answer. For question 12, it says, shape A is reflected in a mirror line to give shape B. On the grid, draw the mirror line. So since it's a reflection, the mirror line is going to be over here. Yeah, this is going to be the mirror line. Why this? Because we need to make sure that the distance of corresponding points is same from the mirror line. As you can see, these two corresponding points have the same distance, which is one unit. For this and this, we have one, two and a half and one, two and a half. For this point, it's one, two, and a half again. One, two, and a half again. As you can see, the image clearly shows that the original image and the mirror image are equidistant from the mirror line. Part B says Alex is asked to reflect shape P in the x-axis. Here's the diagram Alex draws. Explain the mistake Alex has made. So the question clearly says that Alex has to reflect shape P in the x-axis. But as you can see, Alex has instead reflected the shape in the y-axis. So basically that's what's wrong over here. He reflected the shape in the y-axis. So instead of doing this, what he should have done was made this. This is the correct reflection of shape P in the x-axis. Question 13 says there are 50 teachers in a school. This is one sixteenth of the total number of people in the school. Work out the total number of people in the school. So 50 people basically are one sixteenth of the total people. 
and these 50 are the teachers. So what we will do is that we will write 50 equals to 1 over 16 times x. I'm going to assume that total people are x. So now to find x, we cross multiply 50 times 16 equals to x. And that is going to give us Eight hundred. So total number of people in the school is eight hundred. That is your answer. Question fourteen says packets of sweets are put into boxes. So we have the measurements and shape for the packet, and then we have the measurements and shape for the box. Each packet is a cuboid, eighty millimeters by sixty millimeters by twenty millimeters. Each box is also a cuboid, which is 72 centimeter by 48 centimeter by 24 centimeters. Work out the greatest number of packets that we put into each box. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin with finding the volume for the packet and then for the box. Volume of packet. That's going to be 80 times 20 times 60. That's going to give us 96,000 millimeter cube. Now we find volume of the box. So that's going to be 72 times 48 times 24. That is 48,000 384 centimeter cube. Now, as you can see, the volume of packet is in millimeter cube and the volume of box in centimeter cubes. In order for us to find the number of packets, we need to convert them in the same metric unit. So either we can convert both in centimeter or like in millimeters. I'm going to convert the volume of the box into millimeter. Why? Because that's going to be easier. We know one centimeter equals to 10 millimeter. So one centimeter cube is going to be 10 cube, which is 1000 millimeter cube. So in order to convert this into millimeter cube, I am going to times this by 1000. And that's going to give us a huge value in millimeter cube. So now to find the number of packets, we divide the volume of the box by the volume of the packets. And that's going to give us 504. So that is the greatest number of packets that can be put into each box. Question 15 says, here's a fair ordinary dice and a fair eight-sided spinner. Charlie throws the dice once and spins the spinner once. Is Charlie more likely to get a number less than three on the dice or a number greater than five on the spinner? You must show all your working. So as we said previously, on a fair ordinary dice, we have the number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And over here on a fair eight-sided spinner, we have numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So probability of a number less than three on the dice is going to be, since it's just two numbers, that's going to be two over six, which is equal to one over three. For a probability of a number greater than five on the spinner, so that's one, two, three numbers. So that's going to be three over eight. So if we compare these two, one divided by three is 0 0.3 recurring. And three over eight is 0 0.375. 
So as you can see, there's a greater chance of us getting a number greater than five on the spinner as compared to the a number less than three on the dice. So this has a higher chance. Question 16 says, Paolo drives at an average speed of 56 kilometers per hour for one hour, 45 minutes. Work out the distance Paolo drives. So before we start with this, let's convert the time into hours. So we know one hour is equal to 60 minutes, which means one minute is going to equal to one over 60 hours. So to convert 45 minutes into hours, we will do one over 60 times 45, which basically equals to 0 0.75 hours. So total time in hours is going to be one plus 0 0.75, which is 1.75 hours. Now, average speed has the formula of distance over time. Distance is 56 kilometers per hour. Average speed is 56 kilometers per hour. Distance is what we're trying to find and time is 1.75 hours. So we'll do 56 times 1.75. And that's going to give us 98 kilometers. That is your distance for this journey. Question 17 says there are three cinemas, A, B, and C. The mean number of seats per cinema is 380. There are 350 seats in cinema A, 250 seats in cinema B, and we need to figure out the number of seats in cinema C. So... 350 plus 250 plus X. I'm assuming that the number of seats in cinema C is X. Sum of all these seats is going to be divided by the number of cinemas, which is 3. And this equals to the mean value because we're trying to find the mean number of seats per cinema. So number of seats in the numerator Cinemas in the denominator, three cinemas, so three equals to 380, which is the mean value. So 350 plus 250 is, is 600. And we do 380 times three to get rid of the fraction. So 600 plus X equals to 1140. So X would be 1140 minus 600. And that's going to give us 540 seats. So these are the number of seats in cinema C. Question 18 says, Asha buys 180 cans of cola. The cans are sold in packs. There are 12 cans in each pack. And each pack costs 3 pounds. Work out the total cost of the cola Asha buys. So each pack costs 3 pounds. And there are 12 cans in each pack. So 12 cans cost 3 pounds. One can will be 3 over 12, which is 104, which is 0 0.25 pounds. Or like 25 pence. We need to find the cost of 180 cans. So 180 times 0 0.25 is going to be the cost that we're trying to find. And that's going to be 45 pounds. So first what we did was we found the cost of one can by dividing three by 12 because three pounds is the cost of 12 cans. So that gave us 0 0.25 pounds. So when we times that by 180, we get the cost of 180 cans, which is 45 pounds. Then it says Ethan buys a box of 24 cans of lemonade for 7 pounds. There are 330 ml of lemonade in each can. Work out the cost of 100 ml of lemonade, giving your answer correct to the nearest penny. 
So a box of 24 cans of lemonade is for seven pounds. There are 330 ml of lemonade in each can. So let's first find the cost of one can. That's going to be seven over 24. And that equals to 0 0.2916 recurring. There are 330 ml of lemonade in each can. So 330 ml basically costs 0 0.2916 recurring. So 1 ml will be 0 0.2916 recurring divided by 330, which is going to be 0 0.000838. Pounds. So to find the cost of 100 ml, we multiply this by 100, 8838, and that gives us 0 0.08838 pounds. They're saying give your answer correct to the nearest penny. So for that, we will multiply 0 0.08838 first by 100 to convert pounds into pennies. So that's going to be 8.838 pence. And since it says nearest, so that's going to be 8 pence. That is your answer. So first you begin with finding the cost of one can. So seven divided by 24, this gives us the cost of one can in pounds. We know one can has 330 ml of liquid in it. So to find the cost of one ml, we divide the cost of one can by 330. And that gives us the cost of one ml in pounds. Then to find the cost of 100 ml, we multiply that cost by 100. And that gives us the cost in pounds for 100 ml. So since they want the answer in pennies, so we times that pound quantity by 100 pence. And then we round it to the nearest penny. And that's going to give us the right answer. Question 19 says 240 people work at a factory. Of these people, 150 have a car, 110 have a bicycle, and 65 of the people who have a bicycle do not have a car. Use this information to complete the frequency tree. So 150 have a car. So that means if we subtract 150 from 240, that's going to give us the number of people who don't have a car. And that is 90. Then 110 have a bicycle and 65 of the people who have a bicycle do not have a car. 65 of the people who have a bicycle do not have a car. So that's going to be over here. So this is going to be 25. 110 have a bicycle. So 40 don't have a bicycle. So this is a frequency tree percentage of the people who have a car also have a bicycle. So that's going to be 100%. these people. So 110 over 150 times 100. That's going to be 73.3%. These are the people who have a car and also have a bicycle. Question 20 says, work out the value of 25 minus square root of 43.87, divide by 6 plus 2.1 square, write down all the figures on a calculator display. So just directly plug this in your calculator. And what you should get is 1.76527. Five two seven nine two three zero two two nine one. 
part b says work out the value of the reciprocal of 0 0.625 we know 0 0.625 can be rewritten as 625 over 1000 like we discussed previously if you move the decimal three units towards the right hand side we will add three zeros with the one in the denominator so that makes it 625 over 1000 since they want us to find the reciprocal of 0 0.625, that's going to be 1000 over 625. And that will give you 1.6. Question 21 says, write 60 as a product of its prime factors. So we can start by splitting 60 into 6 times 10. We know 6 is 3 times 2 and 10 is 5 times 2. As you can see, 3, 2 and 5 are all prime numbers. So that means we have split 60 into its prime factors and we can rewrite this as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5, which can be further written as 2 square times 3 times 5. This is your final answer. Always combine the similar factors together and write them as powers. Question 22 says there are 48 counters in a bag. There are only red counters and blue counters in the bag. Number of red counters to number of blue counters is 1 ratio 2. Helen has to work out how many red counters are in the bag. She says there are 24 red counters in the bag because 1 is half of 2. So 24 is also half of 48. Is Helen correct? You must give a reason for your answer. So, we know that there are 48 counters. So, we try to find the number of red counters. That's going to be one third of 48. Why one third of 48? Because when we're trying to find a value from a ratio, we first convert the ratio into a fraction. While converting the ratio into a fraction, the denominator is always the sum of the values in the ratio. That's why it's 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3. And the numerator is always the part that we're trying to find is represented in the ratio, which is red. So in red, it's 1 over here. So 1 over 3 times the total quantity, which is 48. And 48 divided by 3 is basically 16. So she was assuming that 24 red counters are in the bag because one is half of two, so 24 is going to be half of 48. And as you can see, we have 16 counters for red in the back, and 16 is not half of 48. So no, Helen is not correct, because we have 16 counters for red, and 16 is not half of 48. Basically, what she was confusing it with is because it's 1 is to 2. Your red counters are basically going to be half of the blue counters. So blue counters are going to be 2 times 16, which is 32. So yeah, blue counters and red counters are in like 1 is to 2 ratio, but not like the entire counter box. You can't say that, you know, if that's 48 and the ratio is 1 is to 2, so red is going to be half of the total. That's incorrect. Red is half of blue. That is correct. So you need to make sure, like, which value you're using and how you're interpreting the ratio. Question 23 says, n is greater than equal to negative 2 and less than 5. Write on the greatest possible value of n, keeping in mind that n is an integer. So in this range, the values we have are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So as you can see, greatest possible value is 4, not 5, because 5 is not included in this range. So what is your answer? Then it says on the number line show the inequality, m is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than 1. So at negative 4, We'll draw a shaded circle because negative 4 is included in the inequality. And at 1, we'll draw an unshaded circle 
because one is not included in the inequality. Now the values are between negative four and one. So we connect the two by this line. And that is your answer. Part C says solve two or five G minus four less than six. So what we will do is we will begin with taking the four to the other side. So it's going to be six plus four. So two or five G is going to be less than 10. Cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. It's going to be 10 times five over here. So two G is less than 50 now. So G is now going to be 50 divided by two and that is 25. So G is less than 25. That is your answer. Question 24 says, here's a triangle and a rectangle. All measurements are in centimeters. The area of the triangle is 10 centimeters square greater than the area of the rectangle. Work out the value of X. So area of a triangle basically has the formula of one over two times base times the height. You can call this your base and this your height. So that's going to be one over two times eight times six X and that's going to be 24 X. Now the question says that the area of the triangle is 10 centimeters square greater than the area of the rectangle. So the area of the triangle is 10 centimeters square greater than the area of the rectangle. So that's going to be 24 X equals to 10 plus area of the rectangle. Area of the rectangle is going to be 5 times 4x minus 1. So that's going to be 24x equals to 10 plus 5 times 4x minus 1. 24x equals to 10 plus 20x minus 5 because expand the bracket. So 24x equals to 5 plus 20x because we solve 10 minus 5 which is 5. Now I'm going to take 20x to the left hand side. So that's going to be 24x minus 20x equals to 5. 4x equals to 5. And x is going to be 5 by 4. Which can be rewritten as one whole number 1 over 4. That is your answer. Question 25 says last year family recycled 800 kgs of household waste. 57% of this waste was paper and glass. Weight of paper recycle is to weight of glass recycle is 12 is to 7. Calculate the weight of the glass the family recycled. So basically, 57% of this waste was paper and glass. So if we find 57% of 800, that's going to give us the amount of waste. So that's going to be equal to 456 kgs. That is the waste. Now this waste is divided into paper recycled and glass recycled. So they want us to find the weight of the glass recycled. Our fraction for glass is going to be 7 over 12 plus 7, which is 7 over 19. Then to find the weight of glass, I'm going to multiply this fraction with the total weight of the waste, which is 456, and that is going to equal to 168 kgs. That is your weight of class the family recycled. Question 26 says a number D is rounded to one decimal. The result is 12.7. Complete the error interval for D. 12.7 lies between 12.8 and 12.6. We know that the number D is rounded to one decimal place and the result was 12.7. So if we round 12.65 to one decimal place, that's 12.7. And if we round 12.75 to one decimal place, that's going to be 12.8. But over here, it's less than, which means we will round 12.74 to one decimal place, which is basically going to equal to 12.7. Hence, our interval is from 12.65 to 12.75.
Question number seven says, I'm seen by the house with a value of one fifty thousand pounds. The value for house increases by four percent each year. Rachel buys a house with a value of one sixty thousand pounds, and the value of Rachel's house increases by one point five percent each year. At the end of two years, whose house has greater value? You must show how you got your answer. So for Tamsin's house and Rachel over here. The value of the house was on 50,000 and it's increasing by 4% each year. So we will multiply the initial value of the house by one plus four over 100 whole power two, because they're saying that we have to find the value of the house at the end of two years. So that's going to be 150,000 times 1.04 to the power of two. And that basically equals to 162, 240 pounds. Then for Rachel, it's going to be 160,000 times 1 plus 1 1.5 over 100 whole power 2. Because that's the rate at which her house is increasing in value. So that's going to be 160,000 times 1.015 to the power of 2. And that gives us a value of 164.836. So if we compare the two, we can easily say that Rachel's house has greater value. Question 28 says here are five graphs. The table shows the equation of these graphs. So the table. Match the letter of each graph with its equation. The first equation, this is a linear equation. And since it shows a negative slope with a positive y-intercept, so that's going to be this one. That's A. Because we can see that we have a positive y-intercept of 5 and we have a negative slope, which is shown by the negative 2 value. Then in B, we have a quadratic equation where x equals to 0 is a x-intercept and x equals to something positive. So if we factorize this, that's going to be x times x minus 4. So one value of x is going to be 0 and the other is going to be 4, which means this is b. Now for c, this is a rational function, so that's going to be y equals to 1 over x. For d, this is a linear equation with a positive slope and we have a positive y-intercept over here. So positive slope, positive y-intercept, that is y equals to x plus 3. And this is a cubic one because we have two turning points. So that's E. And that is your answer.